Hi, welcome to the Mike Page Doodle Club. I'm Mike Page, and today we are going to draw Lavender. Lavender is a basset hound that lives in Dedham, Massachusetts. So grab a pen or a pencil and some paper, and let's get right to it. All right, today we're going to make Lavender the basset hound. So we're going to start with, and this is all, <laughs> Lavender's head is almost going to be like a light bulb. So I'm going to start with the upper half of a circle. I'm going to cut in slightly. I'm going to come down. There's going to be an ear hanging off over here. And I say hanging because this is a basset hound. Let's be serious. Uh, and then her face is going to taper in like this. I don't typically block out the overall shape of the head first with the dog, but with a basset hound, I think it might be kind of helpful. And this is going to be a very droopy jowl on one side and on the other side. So there we've got basset hound jowls. And then just a nice curved bowl shape there for the lower jaw. And this area will be lip. So I might just kind of shade that like that so that I can fill in the mouth. And you can see the separation there of mouth and lip. All right, now I'm going to come back up and fill in some detail, but this way you kind of see what we're working with here. So I'm going to make the eyes. I'll start on this side because I'm right-handed and that way I can see the first eye as I make the second one. So on a basset hound, we wanna have a pretty, uh, I might go ahead and make the other one too while we're at it. So it's going to be a fairly steep rainbow shape like that. And then I'm going to make that a bit thicker because basset hounds have such droopy eyes. And then a bowl shape here. This one's gonna be a bit of a steep bowl shape. Again, because everything's so droopy on a basset hound. I actually learned a few years back that basset hounds have such long ears because it helps trap the smell against the ground as they're sniffing. So it's almost like creating a cone for them to smell within, which is pretty cool, I guess. They certainly serve their purpose. Um, there, there's going to be a lot of white in a basset hound's eyes. So I'm making the iris way up here, and the pupil will even be within, within that. Uh, most dogs, you can't see very much white, but again, basset hounds are very droopy dogs, so we're going to see a lot of that. Um, when you're making an eye, there's going to be a sort of a ring here, and you'll want a shadow coming along like that across the top. You don't have to do that, but I think you'll find it helps add a bit of realism. And now we're going to start making some of the markings down the center of the face. Lavender really loves the couch. Doesn't really seem like the most active dog in the world, but 
doesn't make her any less of a great dog. Um, when you're making a basset hound, you'll definitely want to really add some weight to the eyes. Um, so I'm making some markings here. And then as we come down to the bottom, we're going to get into some real droopy eyelids. Um, so we're going to add a bit of weight down here. And... Basset hounds and bloodhounds tend to have heavy eyelids with, with some dark markings on the underside. And Lavender's got some dark shading up here as well. That's going to sort of blend into this line that we made. And then there's an even darker section that's going to come across the top on both sides. Kind of stay close to the eyes there. So I'm just going to scribble this dark real quick. And I think I'll add the nose next because let's face it, that's pretty terrifying without a nose. So let's go ahead and get that in there. Lavender is a very cute dog, but without a nose, I don't know. Um, a Basset Hound is going to have a very large nose relative to other dog breeds. The better to smell you with. And this is going to be sort of a rounded off triangle with a slight flat edge on one, on the bottom end. I chose dogs as a theme for this week because dogs are the best. And there's been a lot of negativity on the news and going on in the world. I figured everybody could use some dogs. And dogs are pretty fun to draw. Every dog breed has its has its own traits that make them unique and they're it's fun to draw different breeds and try to get each one as as close as you can. Um, I'd be willing to bet that if there's anybody out, out there watching that has a Basset Hound, they're probably screaming at me that I'm, miss I'm getting something wrong right now. Um, and that's actually one of the things that I love about drawing dogs is that you have to get them right. Uh, because there's there's personality that comes with each breed and if you're if you capture that, then you nailed it, and it feels great. And if you get it wrong, somebody's going to tell you what what you missed. Um, but dogs are a great subject matter, and people are very passionate about them. So they're a lot of fun for me to practice on. Uh, Lavender's got like some spotty markings in here. So it's going to be darker, closest to the mouth. So we're just going to make some stippling in here. That's like little tiny dots. Um, and they can be a little bit scribbly as well. They don't have to just be dots. Do some little scribbles.
And the centermost part I'm going to make a little bit darker. Um, and then the markings get a little fainter as it comes out from that. Now, this is the kind of thing, if you're drawing a specific dog, you want to get it right for the dog that you're drawing. So this is Lavender. I want to get Lavender's face markings correct. Um, because if I give this to my friend Dylan, who is, Dylan's, or is uh, Lavender's human, if I show this to Dylan and I have these marks correct, he's going to say, oh, that's Lavender. If I give it to Dylan and he sees that these markings aren't quite right, he'll say, I have a dog like that, but my dog's face has, you know, uh, the markings do this instead, you know, so if you're, it's just like if you were drawing a human, if, if you get the eyes right, Someone might know exactly who you drew, and if, if something's a little off, they, they might say, that almost looks like so-and-so, but, um, you know, little, little details are very important if you're trying to draw a specific person or a specific dog or a specific cat, because if it's uh, your loved one, you're going to know the difference between close and correct. So you definitely want to pay attention to the little details. And this is the kind of thing if you wanted to do a really serious drawing of, of a dog or a cat or a human or whatever, it's, it's always good to do a, a quick version like this that's just kind of practice before you get into a, a more time consuming one make your mistakes when it's not so high stakes and it doesn't matter so much. You don't have quite as much time invested. Then you know where you're likely to mess it up and you'll be more careful in those spots moving forward. So for Lavender's ears, I'm, I really want to show the weight of those ears. So there's a lot of long, slightly curving lines. Um, and we want to get those right. There's one ear. Again, typically I like to draw this side first. Um, since I'm right-handed, that way I can s see what I'm doing as I make the second one and try to m make things accurate. But I don't always remember to start on my left. And again, we really want to show the weight of these giant ears that help Basset Hounds sniff. And there's a little bit of shading here. So I'm just going to quickly block that in. And a little bit of shading over on this side, right in that little section. And we want to add a few more wrinkles to these ears. Again, give it, give it as much weight as you can. Basset hound ears are almost like giant stage curtains. So you want to have a few uh, ripples going down through there. And we'll, we'll make Lavender sitting on the couch here. So this is going to be her hind leg. This is another uh, area that it helps to kind of kick the pen out. Um, I, I find a lot of times I get better results if I imply these parts quickly rather than try to take my time to get these curves. Um, a lot of times it looks more natural if it's a real quick kick out. I'm going to make a, little, a couple little 
basset hound claws here. Toenails, whatever you want to call them. And we're going to be able to see a little bit of the pads on the bottom of her foot because basset hounds have these really funny bulbous toes like this. And I'm just going to put some wrinkles in the couch to match Lavender's wrinkles. And we'll give her a little tail sticking out here. She's got a white tip on her tail, but the rest of it's dark, so I'm going to go ahead and make the rest dark there. And her back in here is all dark. I'm not going to shade that all perfectly because I want to keep moving here, but just kind of scribble in a couple different directions to make it nice and dark there. And then her front we can actually see sticking out from her ear. And then I accidentally kicked the pen out into the ear a little bit, but that's okay because that's going to help me show you here that you're going to want this line sort of continuing. So I wouldn't want this line coming out over here because that doesn't really make sense. This, this is going to be one continuous shape on the back side, even though you can't see it. And again, when you're making a basset hound, it's all about showing all of that droopy weight. So this is going to be a front paw and the front leg. But we want to show as much weight in here as we can. And we'll Sorry, I went off, off camera there for a second. And again, the more you're just kind of kicking the, the pen out, the better results you'll get in this area. And we really want to show that weight of lavender sitting, sitting on the couch, just sinking right into it. Um, you know, whether you're talking about her ears or her jowls or her, <laughs> uh, lavender's very wrinkly and and there's there's a definite sense of, of weight um, when lavender is sitting or moving around so you want to kind of capture that um, and then we can put a line back here to imply the uh, this would be the seat of the couch and this would be the cushion of the couch. And you could add more wrinkles in there if you wanted to. And you can add a bit more shading. And again, don't forget if you're making a specific dog at home, uh, you really wanna pay attention to your individual dog's details. Um, so Lavender actually has sort of dark tips to her ears. So I would wanna add more shading on the ears, and you really want to pay attention to all of that if you're making a specific dog, or a specific cat, or a specific person. Pay attention to the little details, it makes a difference. All right, so here is the finished drawing of Lavender. Um, I hope you enjoyed following along. If you are drawing your own pet at home or a friend, um, it's always good to draw a quicker version uh, so you can find where you're likely to make mistakes before you go into your serious drawing. Um, so for Lavender, I would be a little more careful with the ears, I think, um, getting the shape at the bottom a little more accurate. Uh, so that's the kind of thing that it's good to do a quick sketch so you, you find those mistakes early on instead of two hours into a drawing. I hope you enjoyed following along and have a great day. All right, kids, now that you've finished your doodles, 
color them in, and then share them with both Mike Page and Medfield TV. We're going to take those images and we're going to put them all over our station. Can't wait to see what you guys make. Thank you.